Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about The Clean Coder by Robert Martin, or Uncle Bob as you may know him. This is a book about professionalism in the industry, specifically when it comes to software developers and how we can make ourselves more professional, be better at our job, and just really excel as programmers. I want to thank our sponsor for the video, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you're not familiar with them, you can check them out at devmountain.com. They have four wonderful locations. They include housing with the tuition, so you can get up and go and start studying today, whether that's design, whether that's full stack development, quality assurance, Salesforce, mobile development. They got it all. Check them out at devmountain.com. So, uh, if you're interested in the book by the end of this review, there's a Amazon affiliate link in the description. You can help me out and presumably help out Uncle Bob as well. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Robert Martin, Robert Martin or Uncle Bob, of the author of Clean Code, also um, he has a video series revolving around Clean Code, but he also has his, you know, his hit book, Clean Code, and then The Clean Coder was sort of the follow-up book. Um, this one talks about... Uh, and just to give you an idea, this is about a 200-page book. It's not the biggest book in the world. Uh, it's a little about 205, 210. And uh, I read it in about a week, week and a half. I really enjoyed it. It's sort of, I read that, normally I read about a chapter a day when it comes to books, but this one I was kind of knocking out like two, three at a time. Now, uh, this book covers a lot of the issues that I, f I feel like developers, when they're, especially when they're new to the industry, um, have issues with that can maintain that can continue to be issues if you if you don't sort of learn how to handle it so um you know it jumps into some of the some of the topics that I, i'm very glad it did such as how to say yes and how to say no and what i mean by that is you know you're always you are the orange and people will always try and squeeze as much juice out of the orange as they can and so you have to know when to say no and you know you have to understand how to say no and how to give estimates and how to um, when to make commitments and when you need to stand firm and say look I can't commit to that and um, he makes a very good um, good point of the use the word try in sort of communication and that's one of the things I really enjoyed about this book was there's a lot of example dialogues that I found very very familiar and um, that put a smile on my face <laughs> because uh, it, I'm glad to see I'm not the only one right so um, you know he warns about the conversations you might have with a project manager or a business owner or a product owner say so can't you try it's like, look, we're all trying, right? <laughs> um, but if I say, yes, I can try, what that's going to mean to your perspective is he just committed to three days, even though I said five, right? And so you have to, how you can handle those types of stressful situations. Um, I, I found it very enlightening. Uh, also, there's actually some very sort of mathematical um, measurement tools when it comes to these sorts of, uh, uh, with estimates. And he brings up a very good point. It's something I, I've been doing for a short while where when giving estimates on projects, I don't give sort of hard numbers. I always blow my estimates out of the water um, to a point where some, you know, if you want a single number, it's going to be the, the highest number because that, you know, I prefer to give ranges, right? And I'm, I'm glad to see that that uh bob here uh <laughs> i call it bob. bob bob robert and i are on a first name basis now uh but uh, <laughs> uh so bob here kind of has the same same mentality where as a developer it's very hard to pinpoint the you know in the you know we as as developers i feel like a lot of times we try and have a very pinpoint oops phone's dinging my bad guys uh pinpoint a the we always want to believe that things are going to go perfectly, and that's not really the case ever. Uh, so uh, not ever, but um, I I've learned from taking that very optimistic approach that the better approach to do is to under promise and over deliver. That's really it at the end of the day, um, because you're you're setting expectations, and you know. As a as a software developer, you need to be able to communicate 
realistically where you're at and if you deliver ahead of time great but if you deliver, deliver behind you know people are making schedules based off that it's it's much less of an issue to deliver something early than it is to deliver something late and there's a there's a whole great chapter on just that um you know there's there's a thing about um this this book isn't only about like timing and estimates and interacting with the other business. It's also about understanding how what your what your job is. And he goes into some jobs about like how he got fired, his once and only time getting fired, which I you know, that's nice of you to put that in there. That's not something that you're probably gonna feel too comfortable about until you're much later in your career talking about how you got fired for one of your software jobs. But the point of it was understanding your your place in an organization and, and what that means to to them because at, at the end of the day, you, you are an employee and you have to understand what your role is. And on top of that, there's a, a section here on tools. I feel like Uncle Bob has this weird tendency where like he wants, he wrote a chapter about something. He doesn't know what book to throw it into. And in here, like I think it's, it goes up to like 15 chapters. And the last chapter is chapter A, which is just tools. And when he talks about tools, about, you know, tools to get comfortable with. I find that always very funny and strange, but it seems to, I've read two of his books now, and it seems to be that sort of way where ah, I don't really have a book to throw this into, so I'm just throw it in here, uh, <laughs> um, which always cra sort of cracks me up. But it's also about you know what what are what type of developer are you trying to be, and um, you know there's a there's an entire section on mentoring and how it's important for you to grow as a developer and for you to give back to sort of the software community, which is something I really really enjoyed because I'm very big on on mentoring. I'm very big on growing and increasing your skill level and there's a whole section about how to do that and how to sort of take that that approach and mentality. A lot of this is mentality in here and uh, about setting the right things. I think if you are trying to be considered a professional in software development, this is this is quite the book for you, and it'll do wonders for your career. So, and that's sort of the the uh, the analogy I give a lot of times is um, about communication. Right, you could be the best developer in the world, but if you have poor communication no one's going to work with you no one's going to want to work with you and so that kind of goes in this case where um, if you're the most unprofessional developer in the world you're going to have a hard time getting jobs but if you're professional and an okay dev i think you're going to be much better off in the long term now if you're professional and a fantastic developer you're in the top one percent and you're, you're going to kill it regardless so um i definitely recommend checking out the clean coder again there's a, a link in the description if that's something you're interested in I really enjoyed it. It's a quick read. It's a light read. Um, it's not super technical, super heavy in that aspect. So um, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, thank you, Uncle Bob, for writing this book. I, uh, I'm gonna hold on to this. I'll probably read it again in about a year. Um, I, I find like I find when I read these sort of uh, soft technical books that they're they're very helpful and impactful. And what I try to do when I read these books is take away anywhere from two to five items to say, look, this is how I'm going to change. This is how I'm going to better myself, make mental notes, implement this into my process. Um, and that doesn't mean I agree with everything in, in, these, in, in software books. I don't oftentimes, but it lets me reflect on what I think about and what, or what my views are versus the authors. And then, you know, I take an honest approach to say, oh, that makes sense or no, that doesn't. And, uh, you know, I try to improve, continual improvement, right? That's sort of the, the path to success here. So, uh, again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit that notification bell, that subscribe, all that good stuff. Like the video, comment the video. If you've read Clean Code, let the people in the comment section know uh, what you liked about it, or you didn't, for that matter. All right, so Bulls4Y91 asks, Can you tell me how did you learn Angular? Did you study source code, watch docs or courses, how to learn and understand properly? Not just Angular, but any framework. So... The key to learning something new is by doing. I look at docs for frameworks, languages, whatever it is, when I get stuck, when I just want to get started. Sometimes there's a nice getting, you know, quick start guide on there, get you up and running in 10 minutes. Uh, but typically the way that I, I like to start is I go to a video course on YouTube, a free one, and if I really enjoy it and I think I want something a little bit deeper, I'll go and do a Udemy course. But typically between there, I'll have built maybe one or two sort of small projects based off what I know. And during building those two small projects, the, sort of the point of it, and I did this recently with Vue, is to practice as well as to discover a little bit more of the, of the framework, the language, whatever it is we're playing with. And 
and sort of start seeing some of the the insides of it. And at that point, I'm going to docs. I'm going to, you know, um, documentation when I get stuck. How do I do this and this? How do I do this and that? So, but it's all really just about doing once you sort of get ex get exposed to things. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you subscribed and hit that notification bell. Check out my latest course, the 100 Algorithms Challenge, where we go through 100 different algorithms in JavaScript and TypeScript so that you can ace your next JavaScript coding interview. You can get it in the description for just $9.99. Check it out. See you next time. Thanks for watching.